Five panellists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed, it's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. What, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just decolonize you. Welcome to The Advocate. The advocates are all set to gang up against those stubborn issues that concern us all. I'll be asking the question that has probably passed through a lot of our minds in recent times. In whose interest are our senators pursuing certain apparently unproductive bills? Laboris is specific about his advocacy. He's taking on the Aberus at Uyo Airport and those that enable them. I hope they are listening. Emeka tackles current coronavirus and the matter of our preparedness, or should we say unpreparedness? I say someone had to. Chuka is interested in the more sensitive issues of empathy and how we respond to victims of disaster. Interestingly, Chuka's advocacy is probably related to Emeka's. Ekene is looking ahead to the next level of governance and makes a call for the real governors to please stand up. Make no mistake, although we are seated, we are all committed to standing up for what we believe. I'll be the first to step out after the break. One sure measure of public service is that it is done in the people's best interest. So I'll be asking, in whose interest? Just over a week ago, the generator ban bill, as it is popularly referred to, sponsored by Senator Bima Mohamedou Inagi, which seeks to ban the importation and use of generating sets to curb the menace of environmental pollution and facilitate development of the power sector, was introduced before the Senate. The bill proposes that any person who imports generating sets or knowingly sells generating sets shall be guilty of an offence and be liable on conviction to be sentenced to imprisonment for a term not less than 10 years. This doesn't apply to the importation or sale of any generating set to be used for essential services. Now, I like what the bill is trying to achieve. Pollution, both air and noise, due to the necessary use of these sets is apparent for all. But, and there is a big but. If the bill eventually becomes law, it is highly conceivable that it will lead to an economy collapse as the vast majority of electricity consumers in this country, especially manufacturers, rely heavily on alternative power sources due to the insufficient grid supply. What are we to do if we're not an essential service? Are we expected to go back to the dark ages using candles and dying of heat and mosquito bites? How are we to preserve our food? How about people in high-rise apartments that use lifts? It may come as a surprise to our senators, but Nigerians don't desire to use generators. It's simply an expensive, necessary evil. Why can't we first ensure that power is available before initiating a ban? Why do we always do things backwards? Our leaders fail us and we bear the painful consequences. It really is basic economics. When electricity becomes constant, then the need to import or use generators will diminish and such a bill will be unnecessary. This proposed bill and others, such as the anti-social media bill and the hate speech bill, only serve to encroach further on our freedom of choice and expression and increase hardship and suffering. It just makes you wonder in whose interest these elected officials are working for, ours or theirs. This reminds me of that famous uh, song by Femi Kuti. 
thing is bang, bang, bang. Yeah. You know, we, 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 we have this, and I, and I see this, in the, especially in this, in the last five years, <laughs> you know, everything is treated as the first thing to do is to ban. Mm. You know, there's very often there's very little consideration for um, the impact assessment. What does it mean? What will happen? How will it happen? Even how do you enforce a ban? Mm. People don't often think about it. It's just like the first thing, oh, let's ban it. I think it's just, you know, throw back from very military, military kind yeah. of thing. Um, it's just, it, this doesn't make sense. You know, as you said, it just doesn't make sense mm. because I, 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 can, I can probably bet money that the day they were considering this bill, the, the <laughs> National Assembly generator. was being run on the Yeah, exactly. So, uh, I mean, so how do you consider? And then it creates loopholes, and I think this is the thing for all kinds of, for the law enforcement, for the people who are going to enforce it to start, you know, so you have to apply to become an essential service. So money You see, sorry. Um, I think the senator was just joking. You know, <laughs> joke to have yes. a bill. <laughs> yes, yes. Okay. Um, you know, just create something that would put you in the news. Right. Yeah. Because in Niger State, you have three senators in Niger. The first one is proposing hate speech bill. Mm -hmm. The other yeah. one is uh, proposing a bill to rehabilitate Boko Haram. Yeah. The third one is proposing a bill to ban, to ban generator. Mm. For so yes, uh, just mm. compete for notoriety in the public space. Because, like you said, on the day the bill was being debated, the National Assembly was being run on generator. Mm -hmm. This a colleague of his told us, and and so to them it was like maybe this man is joking, mm. and, and and so um, basically he knows that it's a practical impossibility. Mm. So let's just discuss something. What all these are distractions? Instead of us to be discussing the president's resigning as things are not mm. working. You know, create distractions. Give them something to talk well, okay, about. Okay, let's even I'm, say, I'm because, you, so, so. you know, when you were, I felt you gave them too much credit by saying you like what the bill is trying to achieve. Well, pollution, air pollution. As though they had thought to achieve anything. <laughs> it, it's senseless because, you know, even a child pollution, knows. A very, a very simple thing would be to ban plastic bags. Mm. Yeah, that's Like one. other countries, mm -hmm. the poorer countries are doing in, across Africa. Mm. Um, Kenya, Rwanda, Tanzania. But, but there's such an uproar against this bill that it doesn't take anyone to see that this bill was a non-starter. Mm. So I'm now going to say, what is the penalty for putting forward frivolous bills? Mm. You're wasting public time, mm. public money. How do we deal with yeah, people who put forward? Because yeah. even the social penalty media bill, someone I know attended yeah. the social media public yeah, hearing, and he said, it it everybody was threw it out. Yeah. So why did you waste our time yeah, going through first it, hearing, second hearing? So there must be a penalty for putting forward because we need to stop this in fact, nonsense. In fact, at the forum, tracks. at the public forum organized by a TV station a couple of weeks back, someone in, in the audience during the Q&A had said that he's going to um, take the guy to court and exactly. insist that the money he spent wasting people's taxpayer money yeah. to put this frivolous bill mm, that yeah. should refund it or yeah. go to court. Exactly. And I think and there, should be, right. there should be there should that consideration for penalties. Yeah, and such, stop but, wasting I mean, our time. But they have parliamentary yeah. privilege. That's the honest But truth. I mean, I do agree. I agree with that. We should definitely penalize these people no, for their frivolous they have bills. Par parliamentary but the only privilege, thing I do so worry is that... Because people feel agitated at yeah. the thoughts that they may yeah. soon be in darkness. If the thought that they have to now apply Creating to panic. one very yeah, bottleneck status. It's yeah. a vote him out. Yeah. He's got privilege, yeah. so he can say anything. On but the, the only fear is that you don't know. I mean, I do agree that this is frivolous, but Nigeria, we sometimes a bit crazy. I mean, they're talking about rehabilitating Bukhara, and I really believe that one may pass. Wow. Um, so where, where do we get so? to say something? How do we influence uh, uh, these? The, the, these, um, these bills, sometimes, they want us to discuss it. Oh, really? Like I said, they want us to discuss so it. Using us as a think Ordinarily, tank. it is, like I said, it is a practical impossibility to ban generator because even the man, while he was drafting that bill, they were using generator to draft the bill. No, but they are exempting themselves. Yeah. They will be able to apply. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So it's the poor yeah. man that no, will be that's suffering. that's what I'm saying, that that bill was meant as a distraction. Do you know why? Here, all of them run their houses on generator. Absolutely, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then also, um, apart from the fact that they run on generator, our power, uh, um, what do you call it, uh, power national, provider grid, yeah. services now are alternative power supply. The generator is the main power oh, supply uh, in Nigeria. We know that. So why? And so these are alternative. Mm -hmm. And so if you are now saying ban the main, when What's the alternative it? is not even there, it makes, meant it to be a distraction. Sense. Chuka has been quiet. We have, yes, we have so, a minute or so to go on yes, this, on this yes, topic, but you just be no, quiet. I'm, 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 I'm soaking up, um, <laughs> I've been soaking up what you guys have been saying. Um, I'm, I'm just sad that 
we have morons in the in, in, in National Assembly. <laughs> now he speaks. <laughs> because that really is what anybody who can come up with this sort of bill mm. is. So I direct that th those words at that man, uh, whatever his name. I, I can't even pronounce yes. the name. Um, it, 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 it is very sad. It's very, very sad. If so, it's but a we joke, need to be able to if send that message to no, If it's a joke that he's joking, as liberals say. It's an expensive joke. It's a, it's, a, it's a terrible joke. And if he's serious, then there's something wrong with him. Yeah. And if he collected bribe, to do it, then that's There's yet There's something wrong with the level. people behind the scenes. Then we're we are really rotten. Mm. Mm. Well, there you go. Since, by virtue of their job description, they are there to serve us, we ought to speak out as to what is in our best interest. Laboris is certainly vocal on his topic after the break. No, for they are not preachers asking you to give your life to God and thereafter collect offering before boarding your flight. Neither are they students on a rag day ragging you for your spare change before boarding. They are state agbehus, yes, at the airport in Uyo, and bushing you for cash collection. Uyo agbehus at the airport. It's no longer news that Uyo, the capital of a quiet bomb state, is a fast developing town, with beautiful scenery, tad road, lovely local delicacies and beautiful people like me. Is that all there is to a state as a journey through the airport tells a sad tale of fraud prone, unchecked, unchallenged, unautomated cash collection reminiscent of Agbero collection at Motor Park. Apart from the fact that the departure hall of the airport was far from being called a hall, at super crowded, small with passengers, especially in this period of coronavirus, every traveler through that airport is ambushed to pay 1,500 naira cash as you are not pre-informed until you're about boarding. It's called airport tax. According to them, the airport being state-owned, the money is meant to maintain the airport. White one is not against them collecting airport taxes, as federal airport authorities in Nigeria collect similar levies of 1,000 naira from every passenger, but it's automated. So what happened to automating the collections like fan by adding it upon uh, ticket purchase so the airline can do the remittance? One would have expected that with a governor who rose to becoming an executive director in a bank, no one would dare collect state revenues as cash directly. Even if they do, definitely not at the airport, the gateway to the state. But alas, it's happening as I talk, unchecked, unchallenged, and with threat to the passengers and even impunity. It couldn't be rocket science to automate the collection, would it? Or if the governor is finding it difficult or so do, he can ask his counterpart in Cross River State, who prides himself as digital governor. I laugh in ethic. Or it might just be an intentional avenue for chop. After all, there must be boys, food for boys. A rough calculation of the cash collected with three operating airlines of a bomb air, two flights to Lagos and Abuja, airpiece, two flights to Lagos and Abuja daily, and Dana, one flight each to Lagos and Abuja, would come to an average of one with an average of 120 passengers per flight. If you multiply that by 1,500 naira, will give you a collection of 1.8 million naira daily and 54 million naira a month of 30 days. And if you're ambitious to do a further multiplication by 12 months, it comes to 648 million naira per annum, collected in cash, not automated. Almost see money. Why would they kill to serve us? Yet the road from Ikodek Bene to Ukwad Noimo in Ikon, a local government of the state, despite the abundance of natural palm produce that can supply palm oil to the entire south region of Nigeria, is hell on it. A pregnant woman can't travel on that road, no matter how strong she is. Unfortunately, that's a sad description of most of the roads, interior roads in the state, despite the abundance of oil funds and airport taxes. Who swear for this country, self? I would therefore advocate that rather than get fixated at the center, it is instructive that each of us should sometimes look towards our various states and challenge our governor to do that which they have sworn to do. As our silence to where their misgovernance has turned most of them to emperor, I hear you saying, I wait to put Agba Jalingo for trouble. Despite Jalingo's travail, let's choose to be the voice of reasoning, consistently pricking the conscience of our leader. For if you do your own, and I do my own, Nigeria will go better. And like Evans Ophili would say, I shall soon return to Edo and Delta. I agree with you, Libras, on this one, because I think. You know, um, I hate when people are asking. I, I've been in that situation where I'm sure we all have at some point where they're asking for cash up front. And you're thinking, just 
why should you get to the airport? What if I'm not carrying cash? Then mm. you have to now start yeah. looking for it. It becomes your problem at a time when you should just have a seamless flow. Right. The only problem is that I, some people may think they're actually Agbaris, but they're dressed in official, you know, the ones I met anyway, they're dressed in official, you know, and it's they're Agbaro. busy. <laughs> it's it's Agbaro. Agbaro, Agbaro, Agbaro behavior. Uh, but they're not Agbaro typical, but they're behaving like Agbaro, mm. you know. My only problem is that, you know, even if they do put it in the tax, in they do it the way you're saying, it doesn't still mean they will use it for what? what it means. So we still need to follow them up on that because if the roads are not being fixed and you're saying, or the airport is not being renovated and you're saying you're collecting this money for airport renovation and several months down the line, the place is dilapidating, then you still need to follow them up and say, this 1,005 that is in my thing, what is it being used for? There has to be a way of that follow-up going Yeah, on. I mean, I, I don't even mind paying the 1,005 if I can see what where it's going. It? So, like you said, it's really about holding them accountable. Mm. If we are able to do that, I'm sure most of our airports will, will be looking like, you know, something really decent. Something yeah, I mean, look yeah. at how much money. I didn't even do I, the I calculation. Think, I, I, think, I think the money is small. You think it's more than that? I think the money is small. I think we should pay 2 5 if they were using uh, yeah, it, I mean, you mean if they or you're just Seriously? being sarky. I'm not being no. I'm just just being real. I think no. it's small. I no, think, but I, I obviously, think, if they yeah, use because the airport it needs for the right it's a state owned yeah, airport, yeah. the airport needs to be. But I mm. think that it should be properly collected. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Um, you know, I, I'm not saying it's just to as a point of devil's advocacy, but I think that um, very often we ex, we 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 as consumers or as citizens. We, we often think that this money is so huge mm. and therefore that um, we d make certain demands. Mm -hmm. I think we should pay more for some of the services, just like electricity. Yeah, no, I agree. But, but I think the point is that how it's collected, and I think that's Liberos' yes. main ground, yes. yeah. is that there should be a proper system mm. for how the money is yeah. collected. For every ticket yeah. purchased, every airline ticket purchased, go and check the taxes there are. About yes, I was 10. going to say, what about the taxes? Eight to ten taxes on that ticket. Mm. Half the money on your ticket yes, is in taxes. Yeah, tax. Exactly. And, and so, sometimes there was a passenger who didn't have a dime. He, had, at least he, he said, I wasn't told. Even at the yeah. point of collecting your boarding pass, yeah. nobody would tell you. Yes. Yeah. And then you get me. there, they say, go and collect, go and pay 1,000. For me, I don't have a problem. Even if you're going to charge 5,000 yeah. naira. Let it be part of the ticket and yeah. purchase it so that at the point yeah. of buying the ticket, be at the point of the ticket. I know that yeah. I have so paid you pay, you know what Not you when I for. get to the airport, you collect. And then for me, when you collect it cash, yes. some uh, will go into the of pocket course, of the course, man who course, collected, course. some will it's go like into the pocket. So at the place. end of the day, the money that you say you want to use to renovate or expand the airport, it's not there. It's not there. And More than half of the money goes away because nobody can trust it. But if it is collected by the airline, all you need is your your manifest, manifest. Yes. and then you do the remittance yeah so it's an, it's an account mm, and then yeah. you continue to follow so up i expect on that a money. governor so, so, who exactly. had worked in a bank, bank. that is automated yes. Yes. who is even priding itself as look we are automating even paperless uh, uh, banking yes to ensure that but these I, you know, things I think are this happened to me at the same uh, you airports i'm thinking but I, i'm no, sure I, it will be replicated it's, it's, i'm sure it's, it's happened, not just to you it's airport. happened to me yeah. um, on a number of occasions but I, I i'm just saying that um I, and I think th this advocacy is very important mm. because this kind of ambush and the embarrassment it caused. We were, you know, my school old boys. We were. We had a thing in New York. We're leaving, and then suddenly everybody was like, and we had all spent. We didn't exactly. know, hardly, the, you know. Mm. And there was no ATM, working ATM at Can the airport. Yes. So it was, it was, you pretty, it was pretty embarrassing mm. for, for a bunch of us that yeah, day. Just uh, and were you able to do a transfer? We, you, we managed to do a transfer to someone, to one someone of their who staff. Had enough, uh, yes. Uh, okay, who had enough? Uh, okay. Yeah, oh, who, right, right, who, right, who, right, who right. said it was going to settle them. The, uh, so I, so, I so it's really embarrassing. Mm. I think the, this process needs to be. But this thing is just, your airport is just one example. I think it's a matter of time to be replicated across the state. They collect, they used to collect the cash even at the international. Mm. Airport yeah. until people raise their voices against it, so they automated it. They still collect 1,000, but it's but part it's of the ticket. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but I, I think the reason why they even do this because I always wonder why all these unofficial channels of collecting money and all that. Then I, I start to wonder this is just me speculating like maybe if you're not paying the staff properly. You can't tell them where well, use this to own, make your yeah. own money. It's a bit like, look at uh, Nigerian passport. Well, they tell us, for sure. they tell, well, we don't know. That's why I said speculating, mm. putting it out there. But look at Nigerian passport, for instance. They tell us that the price is what? 11,000, right. the of official price. Right. But <laughs> when you, I saw my file, I saw where mm. the 11 stopped and then I saw all the extra added 
but the official declared amount is, is yeah, yeah it's about you know it's, it's about 20 something that's your driver's yeah. license go and see how yes exactly tell you that they have to pay for their ink mm. their photocopy machine they don't give them mm. so they will justify it but what they're doing is unofficial forms yeah. are being so tied I think if, those in, if the authority really was counting on that money they would automate it so mm. i think they have written that money off saying you know you lot use it to pay. find your own way yeah no, but what they, 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 for me you know, you have to create avenue for loose cash. That's mm. what they do. Mm -hmm. Money that is, is you know, unaccounted for. Yeah. You can't go to the bank to take it. Mm. So you say, Emeka, as my guy, you do airport collections. So anytime I need uh, money, I say, Emeka, hey, you know that, uh, this, how much do you have? Bring. Because that money is not hey. budgeted anywhere. Yeah. It's security so it's, it's not it's, enough. It's, it's loose cash. It's <laughs> so money for the boys. I'm telling you, it's more money for the boys. Yes, no, it's money for the boys. So we need to block all these uh, loopholes. Loop yeah. yeah. I'm telling you. So, so the governor should hear that... Uh, He's giving out money now to the boys from the advocates, basically. <laughs> yes, and yes. that he should uh, try and clean We've up. This a, because that money you can save, but you can a, use but, it to even yeah. expand the airport. But, but it's yeah. a shame, really, because if he's a and banker, the airport, if he's a banker, and then he has a commissioner for transport, I believe, with him, working with him. Yes. And this sort of situation is actually happening where I can be on a flight and you just trouble me at the end. Then I think that uh, it's not, it's not doing it, it is very sad. Yeah, it's like going to school and not. You know, if to it's listen. a deliberate exactly. action, though. Yeah. You know, Nigerians, we don't play with money, so we know what we're doing. Mm. Well, um, we'll continue to tackle issues at the ground level. After the break, America has a down to earth perspective about our preparedness to take on the coronavirus challenge. I know it will do justice to it. Denial could be said to be a game we play when we think time is on our side. But what happens when we're running out of time? I'm going to talk about the COVID-19 and in Nigeria. Indeed, are we in denial? Because a lot has been said about how lucky Nigeria and the rest of Africa have been with regards to the very low reported cases of coronavirus incidents. Some have even said it is because we are black and melanin and all sorts of talk about immunity and so on and so forth. However, the truth is we're beginning to see a worrying uptick in the number of cases, especially as with imported cases coming to Africa, with people for coming to business for business, for leisure, or returning Africans who unknowingly carry, carry this virus and infect others, as the virus in most people is simply asymptomatic. This is perhaps why the coronavirus is very deadly, because for many who go around, they're not, unknowingly they're not, they don't know they're carrying the virus and are exposing others, especially family and friends who may not even know that they're carrying the virus. For most persons, the virus does not present any symptoms for, as we, we've been told, for up to 10, maybe 12 days. And by then, many people will have been exposed to it, which is why many governments have taken the rather drastic measures of restricting travel and movement within their states and even stopping people from coming into their countries and internally um, with regards to gatherings and public spaces. Well, so yesterday, or two days ago, we heard that the Nigerian government says that they're going to restrict travel from 13 countries, which is good news because we, everybody was worried before then and people were clamoring for travel restrictions to be, to be put in place like Ghana did, like South Africa have done, like Egypt and so many other countries. Um, this came maybe two weeks late, but it's better than nothing. Clearly, and this is a fact, we do not have enough test kits or the medical infrastructure to deal with a full-blown COVID epidemic. That's the reality. Take, for example, Lassa fever is still killing hundreds of people every year in the country. And we, clearly we don't have the infrastructure to deal with that, let alone um, um, the coronavirus. Look, maybe, and I see this as a, the, the fact, I hope that the fact that we defeated Ebola is not making us feel complacent. There's this thing, we, we keep thinking that, oh, because we, we dealt with Ebola in how many weeks, therefore, but this is a wholly and entirely different disease. The fact is, corona is not Ebola. Coronavirus is even more contagious, and it does not present symptoms in most cases. And given our propensity to dislike data, as well as the debt of logistics infrastructure made worse by our present economic situation, I'll talk about the state of our healthcare, we should worry, as I worry. But not to panic, though, um, because panic causes more problems. But I think that the measures that the government has put in place with regards to the travel restrictions are very welcome. But we should be more careful, at least on a personal level. You know, 
we should carry around this little thing, wash our hands as often as possible, um, have sanitizers in the car, in the kitchen, and the home entrances. Let us be more proactive and protect ourselves and our families. That's it for me. You have basically said everything that needs to be said. Mm. Mm, so, um, apart from re-echoing the fact that um, I see that um, government is actually not sincere with the numbers, because um, like I always would use the word, it's a practical impossibility with the non-availability of this um, infrastructure for them to even be able to track all the um, people that you're talking about. Because in some, even some that have you know, come out to request for um, um, the attention, yes. it took them time. In some case, states that boosted to us, like Enugu State, that they, in fact they are prepared. We saw just one case there, and we saw where they kept the woman, you know, was dehumanizing. Uh, Lagos State initially, too, also said they have a 100 bed space mm. until uh, Punch exposed the, <laughs> the unpreparedness, <laughs> you know. So I think for me, it's, we all are governments at our various level in Nigeria. So mm. we should take our personal hygiene seriously because if you wait for these people, to, to attend to you because it's like we're waiting for you know somebody to get the virus and they will begin to react. We're reactionary people. If you're waiting for government, you might as well just be hanging a rope around your neck and waiting for somebody to push you. So let's take our personal hygiene seriously. No, I would say that me, um, really, the coronavirus has really challenged the, yeah. glo the globe in its entirety. So I, I wouldn't necessarily even put Nigeria's reaction down too much, even though I'm not saying I'm not scoring them above 50, but I'm saying I understand that a lot of people were caught off guard. Mm. You know, if you look at Italy, yes, if you look at even even America, the UK, even a lot America. of people that were on the back foot because they didn't really take it seriously until it hit home. So even some of these measures like travel bans, the horse has bolted in most cases already in the community. Mm. But I appreciate, I'm happy that they're responding. And I think some of what has led to their responding now is some of this media, you know, people are poking at them and mm -hmm. saying, you said this, and exposing them. And I think that's healthy. I think we need to stay, keep them on their toes. A bit like um, Uche's advocacy, we need to continue to challenge them, whether it's if you put out a bill that's rubbish, it actually makes a difference. People shouldn't say we're tired of talking because it's that talking that is like a naming and shaming that's making them put up the right kind of response, it, albeit a packaged one, but they're being forced to give an account mm. of their stewardship. So I think, yes, it's right, social distancing, like I'm just repeating what Emeka said, wash your hands, do all the necessary things, but don't panic, don't even worry. I'm not even, I'm not sure I can distinguish between worry and panic, don't even worry. Mm. Do what you can, recognize that there's some things that are beyond you, but having done what you can, relax and, and get on with your life. Mm. I, think we, I think we can learn lessons from other countries. The truth is that the coronavirus has not properly arrived in Nigeria. When I say properly, the, the kind of way it we has. We hope it doesn't. In, uh, and we yeah. hope it doesn't. Yeah. If, it, if, it does, if it does arrive the way it is in other countries, we can't cope. That's a fact. Mm. Um, you know. But what is important, though, is that it hasn't yet. And uh, uh, um, because if it had, we would know whether, you know, because you can't hide it anymore. Yeah. There would be sickness everywhere. Mm, yeah. But that to think that people believed what the minister was saying, uh, and, and started praising the countries, what shocks me. What Nothing in Nigeria news. works properly. Nigeria is built on lies. Mm -hmm. And so there's no way it could have been 100% accurate that there were only two people or that it was only one mm -hmm. man from Italy. We are not truthful people. So the best thing is how America has put it. Just prepare yourself. And stop, you know, we don't. I mean, we, but you on know, a global context, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, Russia, yeah, Chuka, Russia Chuka, and North Korea, how Chuka, truthful are they being? They did. No, we shouldn't be North, we shouldn't be North Korea. Or, or even Russia, Russia. You know, where we never were built to be like that. Or even you take it conversely, the Italians who are going and saying so many people are dying, it's like mm. almost sensationalizing it. So many uh, people out of those you've tested. You know, so we need to still put it in context. I'm not really into all this scare, but, uh, scare tactic uh, reporting. Can I agree with you? Because for me, you, the only the, the media is reporting more of the death than those that have survived. Yeah, my uh, land Wuhan had uh, only one know, person left. Um, no, they've they've reopened for they have business now. Mm. Uh, they've reopened for business. And they shut you know? down some of the, they, the they, last so cheap All of this also, also, but then the issue is you talked about the minister. You know when this uh, news broke of the, the Italian, 
the Minister for State, I was in this same studio when he was interviewed in the morning, and I told them... Um, oh, Mamora? Yes, Mamora. And I told them um, the presenter that the minister was not talking like a medical doctor. Mm. Okay, what did and he that, say? Which minister? Mamora? Mamora. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, he wasn't but, talking like yeah, a medical no, he, he doctor. Doesn't, he doesn't what, talk what, like that. What, what, what were that, your problems? Um, he, does. He, he, he spoke more like, you know, for me, like... Yeah. You know, I, I'm not professional. For me, I didn't realize it, 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 it comes like down to the individuals. Okay. For us to have more information, mm. uh, credible information at yeah. our disposal. I mm. think that's one of the things we expect government mm. to do more in, in terms of public mm. information, yeah. Yeah. public sensitization. But, but again, at an individual level, this thing about, you know, at a very social distances, you know, and washing our hands mm -hmm. and just personal hygiene, is, it's, it's the key. Yeah. But I think the most important thing is, is really to maintain some level of of preparedness yes. in terms of the things, how we, you know, uh, because... And I think people should also be responsible in the way they engage with information. There's so much stirring up on WhatsApp. It, it is, it is video. Well, I mean, this is where I wanted to come in. I think actually the media... I don't listen to The media needs lot to be them. held... Um, accountable yes. for that because I think they have been completely irresponsible yeah. with the way they've gone about it. Have you watched mm. CNN lately? No. Have you watched um, any of these but channels? It, but, but I, you know, uh, the reason why I go against all this panic, panic. I hate panic. Who, 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 so period. unproductive. And yeah. um, all I'm for, for me, sorry, quickly. You find out that in the absence of organized information, mm. you know, unorganized information will exactly. take the space. Yeah. And, and so that's why you now find everybody throwing out information mm -hmm. there. So I'm in a panic mode. And that's why, you know, every with society... The conspiracy theories. Every society, especially Africa, I don't want to bother myself with European mm. or America because for them, even if you have malaria, they quarantine you. Mm. Yeah. So there are, for, for us here, there should be constructive information, you know, and not the, I, I, I praise the Lagos State Commissioner for Health, though, you know, with the way he, he talks more like a medical doctor than even our two yeah. ministers. I, you, you know, so, so if so, we have those kind of organized yeah. management, it will be very easy and... Uh, okay. So, guys, <laughs> being proactive means being prompt to take the necessary actions. Um, your feedback spells proactivity, where we are concerned and we value this input. It is Women's Month, and the conversation is about the ladies. On Woman to Woman, Shade Olajubu says, so very well said. Having not lived in Nigeria for close to three decades, I do find the pretentiousness, airs and graces of many of our Niger women folk rather tiresome. The quality of a woman's life is not determined by the shoes worn, bags carried, expensiveness of the weave or the title. Is that what we are passing on to the next generation, she asks. False values or the usual rhetoric of do you know who I am? Which I experienced at the airport when flying out the last time. I was in Nigeria, she says. Sad, truly sad. Also on the topic, Ifi Oji says, this is so me. You are speaking for more women than you realize. On the complete edition, Tyler says, awesome content. Keep up the amazing content. Thanks for all your feedback. Do keep your comments coming in on Facebook, Plus TV Africa, hashtag the Advocate NG, or on Twitter and Instagram at Plus TV Africa, hashtag the Advocate NG. To catch up with previous broadcasts, go to plustvafrica.com forward slash the Advocate. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Plus TV Africa. Well, America clearly has the people touch, but can the same be said for our representatives in leadership? I'll speak more on this topic after the break. Occupying a position of privilege does not exempt the occupant from identifying with the sufferings of the everyday man. In fact, quite the opposite, which brings us to Kwe Kwe VIP. In times of upheaval, it is comforting for a people if their elected leaders display empathy and compassion. One remembers vividly that former President Goodluck Jonathan failed miserably in this regard. But Major General Buhari has so far achieved the unexpected. He is much worse. Indeed, our current president regularly acts as though he has no idea of the various disasters that hit Nigeria, hardly flinching a muscle after brutal terrorist attacks. Remember that he flew back into the country for other festive social activities in Borno after a recent sad occurrence in that region. He ignored the disaster and went partying. 
Yes, that's your man. After the meeting of progressive governors in Abuja a few days ago, Lagos governor Sanwo Olu sought audience with the president and proceeded to lay out photos on a table that showed the extensive carnage caused by a gas explosion in Abule Ado in Lagos. The president looked on as though he were being shown boring documents while Sanwo Olu struggled to engage and impress him. All done, Sanwo Olu packed up his photos with Mr. President not lifting a finger to help gather the photos that were spread wide on the large table. I kid you not, the governor looked no more dignified than a mere servant before an imperial master. Even then, the governor himself, on a visit to the smoky site of the explosion, spoke into a sound system, making a speech and promising 250 million naira as part of a 2 billion naira relief fund for the victims. He did not visit any survivors. He merely performed a perfunctory visit with an unnecessarily large retinue of hangar on staff. That's not good enough, Samwolu. You've got to be more involved, physically or otherwise. We want to see 360 degree thinking from you and your government. We need to see quick action on the investigation into the gas blast too. We need to recapture our old traditional values of care compassion and brotherliness. We need to dress down and get stuck in work. Elected servants need to discard the misplaced mindset of self-importance. Every servant from the president down to the councillor. We must reconsider the ostentatious manner in which we conduct state affairs and reconnect with the common man. As time takes, we now find ourselves in a position where we have to learn from our neighbors, such as Ghana, who hitherto we felt a sense of superiority over. Yeah, yeah um, quickly mm -hmm. to also correct an impression, I think um, the deputy governor visited the victims. Deputy governor and the governor went to the site, and thereafter the deputy governor visited the victim. He on delegated. Behalf. Yes, he delegated deputy governor to visit the victim. But that's not to say yeah. that, um, mm -hmm. you know, the way our VIPs carry on when these things happen, you know, you come, you make bogus statements, make promises which are hardly kept, mm -hmm. and then the president will never address the nation mm -hmm. on such issues. He won't visit the site. Rather, he will send uh, the vice president, if at all. And, and then we all carry on as though nothing happened. You hear us argue about PDP, APC, as if the disaster is a PDP, APC yeah. thing. These are human beings that have lost their life. The least you can do for them is at least give them hope and consolation. We saw how... Oshibanjo was able to calm free nerves in Nigeria when Buhari traveled by simply walking on the street of Yenegua, mm. marching on the street of Uweri. And people felt that sense connection, of yeah. you know, connection. Oh, this is, you know, those people up there relating with us. Yes. But if you sit down up there and expect that people will naturally like you for, you know, I think this is not time for, for mm. fantastic speech. Mm. This is time, truly, like you said, to roll up the sleeves. Mm and be humane in our actions and... and I mean, why, why, why I'm liking a lot of what I'm seeing recently, for me, it's good news that people are querying these kind of issues, you know, mm -hmm. because when you were talking, what came to my mind is women and, you know, some of my parents' generation, they have a kind of code of conduct. Mm -hmm. Even if my dad is collapsing or his generation, there's certain things they must do. If you call them, they will show up. You know, they may not physically be up to it, but because it's the done thing and it's a certain code of behavior that communicates a certain care, they will tick that box. And I think it's necessary. I never used to understand it. I'm like, you just come in. The person should surely understand. Me, I won't go and do all this. You know, but yeah. I, now I realize that it has its value. Because the person cannot say, you did not show up on the yeah. day. So yes, like you said, even when he, well, the reports I heard was that even when um, someone who showed up, he was you know, telling them. He wasn't mm -hmm. listening. He, they were there before him, the victims. So mm -hmm. he could have engaged. He could mm -hmm. have, rather than come and just say what he said, he could Take have off. stopped yeah. to have a time with them there, he did, even if he didn't go specifically to visit. So, and when I look at it, I know it's deterring, slight, deterring slightly. The issue with the, um, the Actors Guild and how they're holding the president accountable. I don't know if you f followed that yeah. story. It sort of broke, broke on our premises. Because there's a way he was expressing himself that seemed a bit too dictatorial. You, you, you're a servant. Let's not get carried away. You're a president, but you're a servant president. Mm -hmm. So if you come and say, you, you can't, don't do this, come through this channel. And yet your body language is sending out the signal that even if they came to you behind the scenes, you're not even open to hearing their mm -hmm. point of view. Mm -hmm. Then you forget that you're not there as an emperor. You're there as a servant. And yeah. we must learn correct leadership, yeah. service 
uh, oriented yeah, leadership or yeah. else where are I, we going i find that this is this this problem is predates this administration absolutely yeah um this is not a this is not a, a buhari, problem. buhari administration no, problem. problem no this is a problem that goes all the way back to um, 1914. Really? Like, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It goes all the way back to videos that to 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 the colonial just, system, yeah. to the system of GRA government reserve, mm. where you know mm. the colonial people lived, and then we had to go, and then the you know the British left us and gave us politicians and, and yeah, elites retained who retained GRA. that same thinking yeah. that they were separate from us, from the army, thinking that they're conquerors of the civilians. It's a problem. So anyone who gets into a, a position of authority begins to think, Lord, I am right now different from you from people. You. Mm -hmm. And we talked about this many episodes ago. Mm -hmm about even how we dress. Mm. You see the man now when I mean I think one time I spoke about yeah, it. Yeah. One time I, I don't really I, mind I was dressing. Made, first time I was made uh, a director general of a <laughs> government agency. My friends got us ah Mecca you have to change you you can't be dressing you can't be dressing yeah, like, like, like yeah, a common like, man. Like, you, you. you know you have to you know and on solicitors some went like, bought me suits and went to tailors and made me <laughs> big you up. statch me. You probably put you your, know, so your initials on yeah, it. Yeah. yeah. Well that's the standard one. <laughs> so you find it now you know, we, we have this distancing. And we're talking about social distances. So there's always that, that distance between the elected or the, the public servants who are supposed to serve us and us, the public. I don't want to labor you know, too we, much on the dressing because liberals could dress like this, but it doesn't stop him being a man yeah, of the people. Yeah, but you see, the thing no, is, but, you know, it, it affects to some and, then, to and even the people who work around you, your drivers, mm, the security in men, awe of you. The, you know, the, they're becoming in awe of you. Even your, and then there's people who work for you, especially the security, now treat the people yes. as if they're mm -hmm. enemies. Yes. Yes. They should be distant. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, they because, should come um, close. I saw yeah. the Malu whip one yes. of these guys had oh, yes. when they were going through with sirens. I said, you want to and do that to whip human people. beings? Mm. So it goes all the way back to yes. how you know, we as a it's people a would construct a conditioning. Mm. I just feel that Look, there should be more empathy. Mm. Yes, this current administration has made it a little bit worse because of the personality of the, of, the, of, the, of, yes. the, of the president. Yes. Yes. He's always been a very aloof yes. person. Yes. Yeah. But I, I, I think that even the people around him, even the governors, um, should not follow that. They should no. be distinct. Yeah. I mean, someone who has showed us, and the governor in Oyo State, Mark India, has yeah. also yes. done very well in coming closer to people. Mm -hmm. no, but I think he was running a campaign at a time when he shouldn't be doing yeah. Mark well, well, So he's not, he's not no, getting no, it all right. No, no, no. But I, I, no, but I, I, he shouldn't be doing crowds of people. No, that was yesterday. Mm -hmm. I mean, that was everybody. So you can get it wrong. Make, make yeah. a mistake yeah. once in a while. I want to call it out. that someone who has shown by his what he's done in the past that he can be he can be an yeah. underground yeah. person, yeah. Uh, and I think he should not lose, he's not yeah. let yes. the system mm. take that away. Take that away. Which is why I'm you. happy when no, people do advocacies like this. Show that I, I, he is you going know, he's shown it, leader, and he, he appears to be. That, you can just yeah. see that he's mm. a, he wants to he, he wants to continue. Yeah, he's so it's helpful to keep holding him accountable. I think we should also yeah to hold him accountable because I think which is what I'm doing for Mackenzie. I don't want to give him a green card during the the just during the sidebar before the show how as a tweet. Of, of the Enugu yes, coronavirus sir. thing mm -hmm. and how the thing went on. And then yesterday evening, the governor, just to show how important mm -hmm. it is to hold people accountable. Mm -hmm. People blasted the governor in Enugu, Governor Buruburu, as we call yes, it. Sir. And in less than three hours, the state had an emergency council meeting and they, they approved 320 million naira, approved a new isolation center, yes. and you know, <laughs> set up a tax force. It was the right. same center they already had. Yes. So, so, the media. So, so, so criticism is very important. Even the Actors Guild I mentioned, I by the way, they have said they will have a meeting we, on as Monday. public, and especially to, people to who have media that. voices, should not let up yeah. and yeah. say, oh, right. because they're saying uh, they're no, against no, us. I, when people say to me, I mean, are you criticize well, is your friend? I said, so? <laughs> no, you're, it's because you're his friend that you should criticize. Exactly. So I just want to repeat again that the Actors Guild, they're holding a meeting on Monday to address properly. Pollution. Yeah, no, it is, mm. because I, I watched it firsthand, and I saw the arrogance with which he spoke, and mm. I said, you don't talk like that when you're representing people. Mm. You don't talk as if you have absolute rights to speak for them. You need to listen. So I'm glad they're revisiting the issue on Monday, you, you and I'm glad these the, women spoke up. You see, the, the, the issue is like, America had laid, you know, taking us down memory lane in narrative of how we got here, you know, and then um, also our cultural perception of the king can do no wrong. Yeah. The king is up there, Imagine. the rest of us are on, underneath. Mm -hmm. And so uh, we we'll forget that the moment we embrace this um, democracy, it's supposed to be a servant leadership kind mm -hmm. of thing, but they still assume the gap of 
king, authority. kingship, yeah. emperors. Absolute authority. And, and so, as a, as a governor, you are an emperor, and then your megads also begins to behave like, Flex. oh, we work yeah. for the yeah. emperor. Yeah, for the and so you should see us as, and then that's why it's become very difficult to even assess them. And that's why a former governor in your state will tell you, we are talking to a constituted authority, you know? So, that, and that's why you have this, do you know who I am mm. mentality? Mm. Do you know who you are talking to? You know, but if we understand what leadership is all about, that, look, as a leader, you're, you're supposed to be, to serve the people. The, all of these, um, you, I see some people, okay, like, some, also this mentality of sitting at the back of the car, the driver is driving, you know, to know who is the owner. Yeah, all of these are, side by side with yeah, the Exactly, driver. even if you sit side <laughs> yeah, by side. Yeah, but you see, that, 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 one has, some, that one has that's a new elite. No, no, because no, no, now the new me, elite yeah, show the, you the young boys that, I can oh, sit we, side no, by no, side. No, elite that we even sit side by side. Forget that one. We're man enough to sit side by side. I'm just telling you. That's what I'm saying. Don't take dressing too far. The position of where you sit doesn't really Even what you wear, because it's in the mind. No, that's what I'm saying. The position is not very important. Some of these are, it helps you. No, I agree. You know, you relate with the people. You know, a, a driver that sits with you side by side, no he matter how you. elitist you yeah. try to be, yeah. sometimes you also want to relate to with him. Yes. You know, to just For me, exactly. I sit at the back and I yeah, still relate ladies, very well. No, because yeah, you're, you're a lady. lady. Yeah, yeah, but what I wanted to point And there's out, the madame think... seat at the back. You have to be. Yeah, I sit on the madame seat. diagonal. Yeah, yeah you can't. Because someone said to me when I had my, my nanny with me, I didn't even know the madame seat. And she hopped in and she sat in the madame seat. And I sat. And they're like, don't let her sit in the madame seat. I'm like, what is happening? No, it's important. <laughs> it's important. But I think the, the thing that really uh, we need to look at is the way as soon as our um, public officials or whatever we want to call them are elected, they now move into Asokuru or wherever. There's a way they just completely move out of... Power the, distances. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And from that moment on, Chica. they are untouchable. Yeah. Well, you don't talk at Mochika. Huh. Hmm. Those who don't humble themselves may well be asking to be humbled, Abi. I'll stay with that theme after the break. No position is permanent is a familiar saying, and yet it would seem that few have familiarized themselves with the wisdom in the message. So I'm here to declare a season of next level in governance. Let the real governors please stand up. We took it as a sign that the writing was on the wall for the Jonathan administration when we were beginning to see indices of impunity in the way his ministers were reported to be cutting away money and abusing process. I would take it that we are in that, at that point again because we see our governors using their power to get what they want at all costs. I cite Governor Dan Ganduje and his dethroning of Sanusi, former emir. Despite the fact that you could say he acted within his remit, reports suggest that the intention behind his actions are reflective of a vendetta mentality. Are we not in a bad place when the very person who is now pursuing the ex-emir for fraud was apparently caught on camera with his hand in the kitty and yet he got away with it. Then we have the case of Obaseki going after Oshumali and apparently doing all he could to deal with him, his very words. A lot of media headlines termed it a feud, which is becoming actually since our civil servants taking from Chuka's advocacy now behave like feudal masters. Now we have the case of Justice Akon Ikweme. I've been following that one. An apparent face off with the governor of Cross River, though he, he may deny it, Ben Ayade, who appears to have used the House of Assembly as his lackeys in effectively denying Ikweme of what is, as far as I'm concerned, a constitutional entitlement. Are we seeing a pattern here? Some would even trace it back to the fact that we have a president that openly disobeyed court orders not once or twice. Dare I say the writing is on the wall again. There is such a thing as sacrificial, service oriented governance in case we've lost sight of this in the midst of the poor examples we're surrounded with. I call out Nelson Mandela and Lee Kuan Yew, who have played a pivotal role to pull their countries out of a desperate situation through sacrificial leadership. So please, please, my people, I make a direct appeal. I, we really need to strategize towards ensuring that the people who govern us are themselves first self-governed. Looking towards 2023 may seem a long way off, but it's around the corner. We must stand for what is right, put ourselves forward as candidates for good governance and support the right caliber of people to lead us. I say from today, let the real governors please stand up and be counted. Rather, let the 
Let the real elected, let the real public servants stand up and be counted. Well, really. they don't even know if they were elected <laughs> or not because there's been so well, much well, rigging I mean, they're, going they're, on they're, there. they're there now. Um, mm. It doesn't really matter. Oh, well, it matters. I'm even talking uh, about the future it ones. It matters that they're there yeah. now, really. And therefore, now that they are in that, in that position of power um, and that they should use that, they should see that the interest of the public. Actually, it's, it's you know, the, the later Maki used to say to me when we had a discussion about Nolly, which would say, America, there's something called enlightened self-interest. Mm. And she took that principle and broke it down for me in a way that this was many years ago that I understood it, that sometimes the thing, that your self-interest, let it align with the public interest. So and everybody it will be satisfied. So it, it benefits the public mm. and then it also benefits you. Mm. And, and I think what, 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 is, what we're seeing now is more of personal interest first and foremost, mm -hmm. and public interest, yeah. you know, not, not uh, at uh, all. Uh, well, that's very short-sighted. I, mean, the reason I, would, I really expect, I mean, I can see that because it's about just grabbing yeah. the national key. You can't be, if you're in their position, and not that I'm saying that I would do what they're doing, but I can see why they're doing it because it's really a matter of, let me just grab what I can. To be mm. thinking about the public, look at the millions and millions of Nigerians. But, but he's saying that's that it's possible to get both. Ekene, Sorry. And that's why, even the examples you cited, the question would be, even those examples, how did they get to where they are? It okay. is through the same self-serving interest. Okay. If we're talking about um, the collective good and interest, some of these people we are calling governors today will not even be counselors. Mm. Some of the people will say, oh, EMEA will not be EMEAs. You know? But they, get, they use the same self-serving you know, opportunities get to get there. Yeah. And so, the next person will use self-service opportunity to pull them out. So for how long? Like that's where I, I align mm -hmm. with your. Um, let me use a biogas language. I mean, perfect stimulacrum <laughs> with your advocacy. That for how long shall we continue like like recycling this? this thing? And so let's look at our election and electoral processes and say, irrespective of what happens, we will stand up for the right persons. And then let the right persons also put themselves forward. Put themselves forward on time, not wait two months. Because as we speak now, the crisis in APC is because of 2023. Yes. Mm -hmm. They have not even shown us the change they promised. Mm -hmm. Not to talk of next, next level. We're already talking of 2023. <laughs> and so those of us who are going to vote, we are seated, we are watching. Mm. And then before you know it, they push two you know, candidates that are incompetent to us and we'll now begin to debate. Mm. And then the... Alternative will not have the time to crisscross the length and breadth right. of the country. So, this is the, so time. this is the time. The end of one election cycle begins the another one. one. And, and so let those alternatives also begin to do those things yes. that will put them in the mind of the people. who can come people. together and back somebody and yeah. say, look, we will back you. That is why, if you remember, in the last election, all the so-called progressive could not even agree on a candidate yeah. because it's about self-service. Yeah. So let's them sit down and say, look, you know what? Let's drop all of these our personal interests yes. and believe, even if I believe I am the, I'm the competent, but if amongst us we we'll feel no, it should be a maker, let it be so. Yeah. And that's the only way we can. Yeah, that's that's enlightened enlightened self-interest. Yes. We need to make, we have to change how we make the leadership positions um, appeal to people. Like we're looking at, mm. it, of course, it's going to be self-serving. When you have collected massive money, invested it in something, you're going to, you want to reap. Yeah. <laughs> you want to reap back what yeah. you've sown. Yeah. Um, so we have to change all that. I think until we change, uh, you know, how much money people spend and, on yes. elections yeah. and yeah. campaigns, um, all the remunerations that, yeah, well, all expensive. the remunerations it's, that come with that office that makes them it. feel how like we how we raise the money. No, but we, Richard, money. we can't actually wait till all that change happens. I'm well, saying that in spite of it, we the right people in place. Yes, they will and they will, they will know yeah, what yeah, to do. That one, if we're lucky, mm. if we are able to. But that's, that's, the, only, that's the only quick so fix I can, I can that, see. That means we are waiting. It's a design problem. No, I'm just saying that the, the system doesn't necessarily allow for the kind of people who that we want. Exactly. So for me, even if we. Someone has to break it and remake it. Yes. So it really has to start from the beginning. Emeka, you said something just now. Before now, the governor of Enugu would have just sat down there and said, we have told them we have done something. But you people Even stood up, in spite of the fact that he's your friend, you stood up and said, no, this yeah. is wrong. Yeah. And now, in panic, they are doing something. 
And we if we if keep believing you know, the system is, is structured will to and change, fail, yeah. they will not change it until yes. we push them. Yeah. We have the past. Yes, we do. They know that we have the past. That's why they will not want us to be organized. Yeah. The moment we organize, they'll be jittery. Yes. I've dealt with politicians, even at election tribunals. They will respect you as a lawyer. Oh, the law, the law, the law. But the moment they win that case, forget it, you are gone. Mm. You know? So that's to tell you how fickle they are. So if we are united and pursue a common purpose for that person that we can't break, use your word, to break it and remodel it, we we'll achieve all of these things. It, won't it might take time. Yeah, to take time. But we but need this advocacy. I think it's quicker that way to yeah. get the right people in place in spite of the system than to wait for the system to change. Yeah, yeah, I don't right think that's it. a fast track. I don't track. know. I, have, I just feel like even when you, you get the right people in they place, they may get corrupted the by the system. Them. Yes. Not you know, if we if fast some time. track them in there. Mm -hmm. if they don't, if no, they have to go through the normal route. Not too long ago, you They have to go through the normal route. Yeah, now I'm believing. Praising two governors. Mackinday and what's the other guy? They are in the same system. We were in Lagos here yeah. and we praised Fashola. Yes. Mm -hmm. Because he's in the same system. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But he came and he said, look, you know, things can continue. Yeah. If the people had consistently stood and maintained that, look, let's have people like Fashola. Yeah. Not because of somebody that brought Fashola, brought to another person. Yeah. No, he must certainly Yeah, but be wasn't good. it the same Fashola? It was that same that's Fashola. A, but imagine that, he will that have, built a website for he will have how many yeah. millions? Yeah. Over yeah. 400. No, no, but imagine no, if perfect. Fashola was Nobody's surrounded perfect. by yeah, people no, who were like-minded yeah, and held him accountable. Yeah, so no, but he was a cut above the rest. Yes. yes. Then imagine if you have several Fasholas at the same time. It would be hard. It would be hard. If not for Fashola, we wouldn't have a PC today. I don't know him. He's not my friend. No, no, I'm not saying that. I'm not that. If not for Fashola, I won't have <laughs> you know, like saying. Yeah, yeah, because no, I, I even no, like the fact enough. that we can even mention oh, the national disease control guy alongside the commissioner. Oh, the fact guy. that you have two technocrats operating almost yes. like a team, team, yes. it, it keeps you, you know, No, I mean, you've actually right, convinced me. I yeah. do believe that if you get the right person in, then they can break down that system. Of course. Yes. Yeah. Look so, at the commissioner like, of, of right. health in Lagos State. Yes. You know, the man is a hands-on-the-job person. Yeah. And so if you have, yes, it might have his own limitations. You know, but if you have, imagine you have that same kind of person as many ministers. Times yes. Over. Many times oh, over. Yeah. Yes. You know, so we won't be complaining. We'll complain, but there definitely are things. Oh, imagine okay. having somebody like that as president. Mm. But oh. yeah, we yeah. expected that much from that. Why, why did we vote for Buhari? We actually expected. I didn't. Bitter. I didn't. Well, I did. The, I, I would have the first time, but not the second. Definitely not. Uh, <laughs> once beaten, twice shy. <laughs> okay. Well. When all is said and done, some would say that that is the time to do what we have said. Do keep your comments coming in on Facebook, Plus TV Africa, hashtag The Advocate NG, or on Twitter and Instagram at Plus TV Africa, hashtag The Advocate NG. To catch up with previous broadcasts, go to plustvafrica.com forward slash The Advocate. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Plus TV Africa. Okay, that's us for today. Till next week, same time, same channel. Ah, keep safe. Let's keep advocating for a better society. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, guys. Five panelists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed. It's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. Well, well, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just decolonize.